Hello, everybody. I am Damon Cook, developer advocate with the developer relations team at WP Engine. And today we are going to dig in on setting up a Git based workflow with local and GitHub actions. Um, we are recording this uh, workshop and we will put the recording up on our YouTube channel at uh, WPE Builders. Um, definitely recommend subscribing and you'll get that notification when we add the video, but that should be up early next week. And um, just some other etiquette housekeeping items, be kind in the chat. And uh, as I said, uh, Sam Brockway and also Brian Gardner is in there. So if there are any questions that come up, drop them in the chat and I'm sure we'll be, uh, plenty of people to answer. Um, and we have, I think, one Zoom poll, which will have probably momentarily launching, if you don't mind filling that out, that just gives us some, some helpful information on who's using uh, Git right now, and hopefully everyone. But if not, by the end of this presentation, I hope that you'll consider um, using Git and GitHub and working it into your workflow. And hopefully this information will make it easier to do that today. Um, let's see here. Just to give you a kind of a visual overview of what we're going to be going for. And, and actually, before I get into that, I'm going to skip to the next slide because I want to go over some of the definitions here of um, WP Engine, what we call what, because I'll be using the words sites and environments. And I'll use these being mindful of kind of the WP Engine ecosystem. So if you're in your WP Engine portal, um, a site usually has three, you're allowed up to about three environments. And so here's the, this is kind of what you would see if you're creating a site or managing a site in WP Engine. So you could have the production site, which is your live site. And then you can also have a staging and development um, environment. So those three environments are what are considered a site. So we're going to focus on kind of having a workflow where if you in Git, if you have a specific named branch, and we're going to go with um, a naming convention of main, which will represent our production site. Um, stage, which will represent our staging site. And I won't actually, I mean, we could typically you would do dev for development site, but we're just going to stick with main and staging today just to, to keep it streamlined. But and so the idea here is you want to use Git to keep a history of all your code and code change in code changes. Uh, push those up to GitHub, and ideally, if you're collaborating with other developers or, you know, other developers are contributing to your code base, they can, you know, get any, all your latest changes in history on GitHub and even push up their work, and you can pull that down and kind of a, just a general end-to-end -end, um, cycle here. So in this visual, we have our staging, which I actually that we're going to use stage. So uh, just replace this part here with stage. Uh, but we would push to GitHub our stage branch. And then that will actually will set up GitHub actions to trigger a deployment to our staging environment. And that will, you know, output to the staging site. So um, then you know, if you have another feature you want to work on and continue kind of staging your stuff for <clears throat> client feedback, then we'll show how to pull down the production database back into your local site. So you always kind of have the latest data from production. And let's see. And these, again, these are the, the steps. Um, so we'll go through all this, but just an overview of where we're going. We're going to set up a local site. Um, we're going to install uh, the uh, WordPress theme, the Frost WordPress theme, and Yoast plugin. I think those are just, I just wanted to have kind of a demonstration of a theme and a plugin to get us kind of kick started. 
Um, and then we're going to initialize Git in the WordPress site, and we're going to version control just the WP uh, hyphen content directory in the WordPress installation. Um, we'll add a Git ignore file, which tells Git you know what you want to track versus what you don't want to track because you know the wp content directory has a lot of files and other directories that we might want to ignore um, so we'll set that up and then we'll show how to initialize git in we'll be using github desktop i thought um, that would probably be a pretty common and popular free uh, gui application that will um, get us going um, Eventually, I also have a post that this workshop is related to as well that will have also for those that are inclined to the, the to a CLI, um, we'll have all the commands as well to, you know, initialize a repo. But today we're just going to focus on the GitHub uh, desktop app. So uh, we'll show how to initialize a repo and then we'll add um, our GitHub actions, which will trigger deployments from github to um, our in specific environments based on the branch name uh, and then we'll publish this to github and then we'll finalize the github actions hookup with generating ssh keys and then we'll show for the final step of um, setting up local connect to pull down the production database um, so hopefully we'll have time for all of that. But uh, if we don't, then the final recording will be up and that will have everything in it. But we should have time, I think. So um, I will pause uh, throughout a few times, too, if we have questions that need to be highlighted or brought up. Um, Sam at Brockway, if you don't mind uh, highlighting any of that. But I'll pause for one second if anything's come up so far. No questions so far. Everyone's excited. Great, thank you, Sam. All right, so let's dig in by setting up um, a local site. And I actually have, just to keep things uh, clean, I just have a fresh install of local. And this is from, if you go to localwp.com, you can download this for free. Just click the download for free. And this allows us to basically run a WordPress site on our own computer so we can tinker and break things or introduce new features and not worry about, you know, push, uh, affecting the actual live uh, production site. So go ahead and I'm gonna create a new site here uh, and I'm just gonna leave it in some of the defaults. I'm gonna call this WP Builders um, and leave the default options here, continue. super secret username and password and generate. And this is basically just spinning up a whole new WordPress site, uh, downloading um, WordPress core. Sorry, let me. Uh, downloading WordPress core, getting a database configured. Um, there we go. And yeah, getting all our files in, in place on our local system. So while that's running, okay, yep, we're good. And we can actually uh, launch this. So it's a, this is what we call a fresh install of WordPress. It's got the default uh, 2023 theme installed and we're gonna actually, uh install the frost theme and yoast seo plugin so let's say add theme and we can actually search for frost and get that installed and we'll activate that and we'll get yoast installed And any of these kind of steps as we go, like I'm just installing a plugin and a theme 
to kind of replicate and set up a scenario for us. But um, any of these steps in this end to end workflow, you could start kind of start from and work your way back. Like if you already have a production environment and want to pull down certain files or themes and plugins and version control those, you can kind of essentially reverse engineer some of the steps that we'll be doing today. Um, but this is just kind of a basic uh, install. So we'll skip over that. Yoast is installed and Frost is activated. So that is, we have step one done. Local is, in, uh, local WordPress is installed. Uh, we have Frost themes and Yoast plugin. So right now, next, we're going to set up a git ignore file in our WP content directory. So I'm actually going to use local to find. So if you go to local here and hit go to site folder, it'll launch my finder and we can drill down. Um, sorry, I went, let me back up actually. So it took me right to the, the folder where the site was installed. And typically you want to drill into app and public. And this is where all the WordPress files uh, are found. And we want to open up um, our WP content. I'm going to open this up in VS Code because this is the where we're going to put our version control stuff. And that is full screen. I don't need it full screen. Let's make that a little smaller. Whoops. Hey, Damon, this might be a good time for this question. Uh, yeah. If there, do we have a minute? Okay. Uh, someone asked, typically we would set up Git before installing new plugins and themes. I know it doesn't really matter, but is there a best practice to make things smoothest? Um. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can. I, I'm, yeah, there, there's many different ways and along any of these steps to kind of go about it. I'm trying to approach this pretty sequentially um, in that I think it's kind of just representative of, of like the, the mental model that you might need to go through if you're kind of newer to version control. Um, so that's kind of why I got our base install set up with like a plugin and a theme first. Um, so I think you'll probably, um, to answer that question, I think you'll probably see, you'll it should make more sense as we progress why I chose to go this route, especially with the next step of creating the Git ignore. Um, so we're going to create a new file here, and we'll save this in the WP content directory. We're in there, so it's going to we're going to call it dot Git ignore, and this is telling again this is telling git what we want to track versus what we don't want to track our changes on um and so since we already have a plugin and theme um installed we, those are definitely those are the two things we really kind of want to keep an eye on for our code changes whereas over you can see over here on the side uh, you know the uploads directory that's typically not something you want a version control that can get pretty large um and then you know this upgrade directory that's just kind of something uh, wordpress core creates and then there's also typically like these index.php files that are um, often found in the themes and the plugins directory uh, which we're going to also ignore so what we're going for is we want to just version control the WordPress SEO plugin and the Frost theme. And that is it in this instance. I mean, given you know any kind of installation that exists, maybe you're taking a production site and just putting it under version control today, you know, you would probably want to pick what plugins you want to track versus don't track. Um, Really, the idea is you want to keep how much you're tracking to a minimum because when you go to deploy these changes, it's a lot more stuff to deploy, and so they can take it can take longer to to trigger and run deployments, which can be counterproductive. Um, 
And also there are, especially with WP Engine, I mean, you can leverage what is like the smart plugin manager service, which will monitor certain plugins. You can granularly tell which plugin you want the, the service to track and it'll automatically update for you. So certain plugins you might want to have tracked with like smart plugin manager, um, or just, you could even just manage it within uh, the final production site if you're confident in the stability of that plugin and not just have it, you know, just remove it from version control. So there's kind of different methods to, to um, weighing the options of what you want to track versus what you want to, what you don't want to track. But based on what I'll show you, you know, you, you can kind of modify this recipe to your own configuration. Um, well, I'm just trying to get to my, let's see. Yeah, there it is. Um, this is the get ignore and it's quite a large file and this will be in the final post but I'll also step through it. I'm gonna copy this over. Um, so this is gonna be our git ignore file and it's all well commented so you can go back and review it. And I think uh, Sam probably will share the link as well. Um, but basically everything in here, we're saying ignore, um, ignore all these, you know, ignore these kind of large files that we typically don't want, like an MP3, um, you know, some of these video files. Um, and then we also don't want these, like I sh showed the index.php, we don't want to track those. And then we're setting like, oh, right here, we're setting a wild card is what this is called. And we're saying, ignore all the themes. But then we want to say, do not ignore Frost. So we're kind of, um, reversing that in a way. Um, so again, here, down here for plugins, we're saying ignore all plugins, but don't ignore WordPress SEO. So that gets us the configuration for our Git ignore that we need. And I'm gonna save that. And as we can see, that's right here in the WP content directory. Yeah, I see Sam shared that Git ignore. Thank you. Hey Damon, uh, there is a, a, another question that has been asked a couple times about uh, why the repo is being set up within the WP Content Directory instead of the root. Um, I typically wouldn't re uh, recommend tracking WordPress core. Again, that's a lot of files, and again, typically, you know, WP Engine um, does updates, and there is granularity around that as well you know you can opt into automatic updates or you can control them yourself you could go to the site you could go to the staging site probably and update core make sure everything's working and then do that on um, production without going through version control so there are different ways to kind of uh, go about managing wordpress core and in this instance i wouldn't recommend uh, version control in WordPress core. It's just a large, um, large files that you, yeah, you don't need in there. I would just, again, to go back to just keeping things simple and minimal for deployments and what you're tracking. Um, that's, that's what we're going for today. So let's see, let's go back. So we got our Git ignore set up and now we set up the Git ignore, but really their Git does not really exist in our WD content directory yet. I mean, yes, we have a Git ignore file, but that, you know, Git is not initialized yet. So that's what we need to do next. And I'm going to use GitHub desktop to demonstrate this. Um, GitHub, De GitHub desktop is a free app you can download and it integrates with GitHub uh, seamlessly. And I think I'm actually already logged in to, yeah, I'm already logged into my GitHub account. So that's why it's showing a bunch of my repos over here. Um, but I have not added our repository yet. So we can actually go 
back to our WP content. And you, you can actually just drag this into a GitHub desktop, which is nice. And then it prompts you to, it says, you know, this isn't a repo yet. So we want to create a new one. And we're just going to call it WPE Builders. Keep things consistent. So this says it's going to add a hyphen because that's not really a, a GitHub needs a hyphen based kind of naming convention. We'll skip the description. The path is there. Uh, we don't need the README. And we already have our git ignore in there, so we don't need one. And the license we'll leave alone as well. So uh, if we hit create repository, it's going to go ahead and initialize the repo. And actually, with GitHub Desktop, I, I think it's a setting, but by default, it creates an initial commit for us. So, um, so we can close that, and we actually have our repository initialized on our um, local computer. And if you click over to history here, it's, you see it created an initial commit for us. So it committed, it looked at our Git ignore and then committed all of WordPress SEO and the frosting um, as our tracked files, which is lovely. And that's what we wanted to happen. So. Um, and if we hop back over to the WP content, we'll start to see some of these hidden directories. So this is the Git um, kind of uh, file structure that Git is tracking stuff now, um, gives you some of the branches, which we don't really have any yet. Uh, we just have the main branch, which is automatically created for us. Um, so that we've initialized our git repository on our local system uh, next we're going to add the wp engine specific github actions um, which will allow us to trigger deployments from github when we commit to specific branches um, and this is uh, again we'll share the link for this um, these are available on github and there's pretty thorough instructions on how to set this up, but we'll be going through it all step by step. But uh, let's see. We're going to start by switching over to VS Code. And I'll close this up and close some of the stuff up so we can get organized here. And we're going to create a, a new directory in here. Uh, we're going to call it GitHub, and then we're going to also put another directory, and this is workflows, and then I have, um, hopefully this is readable, I should zoom this in a little bit, uh, we will share the link for this as well, but these are the configuration files that are required to tell um, our GitHub actions kind of what environment we want to target when we uh, push to a certain branch and what, and uh, yeah, so here, here would be the branch and here would be the environment that we're targeting. And these are all, you know, that we have dev, main and stage. We'll be focusing on just on main and stage today, um, but those will be available, so. As far as um, we're concerned, we're going to just use, we're going to add stage. So I'll grab this. And this is called stage. And these are YAML files, which is just a, another language that you don't really need to know, but <laughs> you can learn more about online. Um, we don't have our environment yet, so we have because we haven't. I will we'll create a site soon um, on WP Engine. We'll start with a new site, but that would go here, and I'll show you how to get that in a second. And but we want this to be associated with our stage branch, which we haven't created yet as well. Uh, but this will be our staging deployment configuration. So I'm just going to save that for now, even though it's not fully configured. And we'll add the main one for our main branch, which will target production. Which is pretty much this. It, yeah, it's the same exact 
configuration. We just need to replace those two uh, variables. Yeah. So here we have main branch, and then we'll get our environment in a second. But these are both saved in GitHub workflows directory. And I'll pause again um, if there's any questions. Let's see. There is a question that just came through. Um, if, if you know, what does GitHub Action use under the hood? Rsync? Um, yeah, the WP Engine GitHub Action is doing an rsync, correct. Uh, and sorry, I'm trying to find the, the link for all these tabs. <laughs> Didn't keep track. Here we go. Yeah, deploy to WordPress, and it, it tells you. Yeah, it gives you some of the further options, which we're using the basic configuration today. But there are a bunch of other options you can kind of get granular with if you want to. But um, yes, this is doing an rsync from GitHub to your WP Engine environment. Okay, so we have. Um, our GitHub action workflow configuration files in our repo on our local computer, but we don't have a site yet that we're, I'm going to, so I'm going to create a whole new uh, site. And let me, you should get a find, sorry. <laughs> let me find, okay, here we go. So here's my WP engine portal, and I'm going to create a new site. And We'll start with a blank site and we're going to call it demo and see if I can find a good name today uh, that isn't taken. DTYVB, I bet you that one's not taken. <laughs> and we're going to disable that and we'll say add site. Yep, got lucky. It's going to build out this whole uh, site with our production environment. And um, while that's running, let me step back over to um, our goals here and make sure we're on track. So still we're right here with 2C, adding our GitHub uh, actions for branch-based deployments. And um, we'll, soon what i because all of this still exists on our local computer and we haven't pushed anything up to github which will be the next step um but first i want to get make sure our uh, site is all set up for us let's see there's another follow-up question about um rsync yeah uh since it's an rsync does that mean that we're not really using the git repo on wp engine side of things um essentially yes correct yep you're using most of your version control history um is all within github and we're really using github as kind of uh, a middleware to push um the, the files and well in our case a plugin and a theme to push those up to uh wp engine environment This is still being built out, but we have the uh, the name for our production environment. So we can copy this over into our main YAML. So that'll go there. That'll be for the main branch. And we can close that one and then um, see if we can trigger staging while that's going. Actually, we can probably just, yeah. We'll wait for production to, to be built, but, um, and then I Perfect. can just stop. Out There's another question. So yep. uh, probably jumping ahead, but will this, or can this trigger a WP engine backup point before deployment in case we need to roll back? Uh, no, that is currently not an option, but that, I mean, that is something you can manually do in the dashboard here. So I definitely would recommend, um, you know, I would come over probably if you're deploying some major uh, work to production, I would definitely encourage you to come over here and create a backup, wait for that to finalize. And then um, 
<clears throat> do your final merge and deploy your code. But that that isn't part of the GitHub actions currently that I'm aware of. Great question though. And great kind of suggestion and something I can certainly ask the team and see if that's an option. Uh, let's see, has our environment finalized? No, it's still being built. Okay. Do we have a second for another question then? Yeah, go for it. Okay, what happens if someone has changed files in production when we do a deploy? Do the files get overwritten? Um, yes, if the, so in our case, Frost theme and we're uh, Yoast SEO, um, and this would actually depend, I think, on the rsync flag that we pass. Uh, but if so, if somebody were to update Word, uh, Yoast SEO to the latest version, if there was a new re minor release, then we were to update and push, then yes, uh, I think by default, it would overwrite uh, Yoast from the Git version controlled. Um, repository versus the one that was already in production. But I think uh, with the GitHub action, you can set an rsync flag to maybe check for that. Actually, I'm not sure on, on the answer for that. And I wonder if uh, Alex is in um, the chat and might be able to speak to that. But I could certainly investigate and follow up with uh, whomever is asking that. I would be happy to that is a pretty critical um, piece. Uh, let's see, is our, yeah, our environment should be all set at this point, I hope. Go back. Yes, okay. So we're gonna add a staging and we'll start with, we'll just copy over our production. So this is the site we just, or the environment we just created. Sorry, I'm, I'm mixing my terms here, but <laughs> uh, we're just gonna create a new environment for that. Well, yeah, we'll say that's fine. And this is actually the name we'll use in our YAML file while it's being created. So we could just copy this and hop back over. And this is for staging, so we're gonna replace this here save that and we're all set there so now we can publish our local repository to github um, and since we just added the github actions they'll actually be triggered but we haven't set up the ssh key for github to communicate to wp engine yet so they'll be triggered, but they'll just fail, basically, because uh, they won't deploy, which is fine. And I'll show you, how we'll set up the SSH key uh, configuration next. But So let's hop over to GitHub for now, and we're going to say publish repository, and we're going to give it a name since this is going up to GitHub now. Uh, organization, I'll leave that alone. And you, know, you can choose if you want this repo to be private. Um, Oh, make it public, push that up. And voila, it's being published. And then one of these tabs I have GitHub open. There it is. So if we refresh this, this is my GitHub and there's the new repo. And it should have, yep, we have our WordPress SEO and the theme Frost. Of course, we didn't actually commit our latest of adding the workflows yet, so we'll do that. I'll say adding uh, GitHub actions. We'll commit that to the main branch and push that. And those are now in our repository. And then if we, Hop over to actions. You can see actually that the 
uh, main branch action was triggered and it's pending right now. It's in the queue and it's going to fail because we didn't, again, we didn't hook up the SSH keys, but at least we're seeing that they're being triggered. All righty. So we published our repository to GitHub. And now we need to generate the SSH keys that will have GitHub communicate to WP Engine and do deployments essentially. So, so we need to do a little CLI work to generate an SSH key. And this will also be in the final post, but I'm going to show some commands here that we have to run. And these are also documented on the GitHub action documentation for the WP engine. Um, yeah, they're right here in this uh, deploy WordPress to WP engine that steps you through <clears throat> how to generate these. So I'm going to open up I term on my system and it's over. And we're going to generate a key on our sys on our computer, but we're going to copy uh, this key up to GitHub and then um, WP Engine. So this is the command you want to run. Um, again, the the ending here. This is the a unique file name that you can give. I recommend probably changing it to something unique to you that you can find on your system that relates to your work. Maybe you relate it to the repository or the user or something like that. However, keep it secure. Um, but yeah, this is the essentially the command. And we're gonna do, you don't wanna have a password. Uh, it looks like I already have this uh, written. So I'm gonna actually say, I don't want to overwrite this, so I'm going to actually <laughs> just use what I have. Uh, but yeah, you would be prompted whether you want to use a password or not typically, and you would say no, and then say then it would generate the key for you. So I have my key generated already, so um, we'll use that. So generate a new SSH key pair. That's what we did, and then we want to put the private key on GitHub and the public public key will go in the WP Engine uh, gateway key. And there's another guide here linked. Um, I'll drop this in the chat because I don't think I had this in the notes, but that steps you through kind of where to put this in. And actually I'll probably grab the link from here as well. So yeah, we can go right, uh, my WB Engine profile SSH keys. Pop-up block, I want to pop -up block. Huh, that's interesting. <laughs> um, we can add a new key here and we'll go back and show. Uh, this is will be in the final post as well, but um this is copying the public key to our clipboard so we can paste that in wp engines port ssh key portal um of course i gotta find my tab again i think i'm close wow. should organize these better i apologize drop that and add SSH key. Oh, this, yeah, I already have this added. So, but that's how you would save that, add that key. Um, and then we can hop over to our GitHub repo. And we need to add the private key um, on GitHub. And that is, let me find that. Sometimes that takes a minute. It's, uh, is it under deploy keys? I have this written up in the final post as well. Secret, let's see. Yeah, I think it's under yeah, actions. New repository secret. 
And we just want to make sure that this matches what was in our config file. So we can actually just open one of these up and see this variable here. We want to match this exactly, this naming, because this is actually the key it'll reference as a variable um, from GitHub. So we're going to copy that over. That's the exact name of the key. And then we need to copy the private key. So we'll just remove public and drop that here. And now we have the key <clears throat> established, our SSH key established. And so we can actually, we go back here to our actions and uh, we can rerun this and we should get a Hopefully a successful build at this point. But while that's running, we make sure we're on track here. We generated our SSH keys and we added the public key to the WP Engine portal and the private key to our repo. And we're just going to see if that hopefully successfully triggers. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to take a sip of water. Any questions right now? Nope. I don't see anything new. Ah, yes, success, 27 seconds. And so, as I was saying earlier, again, we only have um, a single plugin and a single theme, and that took 27 seconds. So the more files that you add, the, the longer the build times and deployment times. So keep things simple again you can there's other tricks you can do to try to cache some of the stuff is cached on github that might make these deployments faster because that was just our initial deployment but um so now whoops stop that if we go back to sites and we're going to launch our new site and make sure our themes and plugins are available. So here's our production site. And of course, um, Genesis blocks, the block theme is auto installed from WP engine. Oh, and actually Frost isn't here, interesting enough. Um, what did I miss? <laughs> we successfully deployed, um, let's see. Ah, oh, yeah, KJ. Um, trying to remember. That's a great point. I think the WP content directory is located in a different spot um, on WP Engine hosting by default. So I would actually have to probably hook up SFTP uh to verify that i think that was the step that i didn't finalize in my notes so that's probably the case here um so when we trigger since our we version controlled the wp content only with a plugin and a theme and it deployed it we didn't specify the directory on wp engine are in our environment that we wanted that to target when it was deployed. So it deployed it into a different directory and not the WP content directory that we wanted on the final environment. And unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to trouble shoot that, um, yeah, remote path. Yeah, that's probably the, I actually, Covered this in a separate tutorial, but so I should have. Oh, I can't copy and paste from chat. 
but we could try that, I guess. Um, trying to think. We still also have, yeah, remote path. We can. Yeah, so this is what I'm talking about here. Um, for the deployment action, you can set a remote path and pass the string. So we can try that. And I forget where. Um, debugging live. Thanks for all your patience. Yeah. Thanks, Sam, for dropping that. I actually can probably <laughs> reference my own tutorial there. Um, but I also wonder, too, because I think we might want to <clears throat> set up. Oh, no, that was because we had smart plugin. Yeah. So I think this is fine. Generated our key. Added the actions. Yeah. So here we did. Yeah. Remote path WP content. So I think if we add this here and then in our staging. And commit and push that up. Let's see if that gets us there. I'll say add remote path. And push that up. Go back here. Watch our workflow run. Cue the waiting music. <laughs> Just so you know, you're getting lots of uh, feedback in the chat about how helpful it is actually to see this kind of debugging and stuff. Oh, good to hear. <laughs> It happens to everyone, um, for sure. See if this build is any faster, too. No, well, yeah, it's about the same. So it says successful. Let's see how we're doing over here. Uh, that's local. We don't want the local. Let's see if I can find my way back to you. I know I'm close. Where are you, site? There we go. Let's refresh this. Ah, yes. Now we're in back in business. So Frost is now here, and <clears throat> Yoast is here. So we can activate that. Deactivate Genesis blocks, and then. Again, since you know, we since we're pushing up files, and you would never really want to push up data. Um, you typically want data and database information to come down, and code to go up with version control. That's kind of the, the flow of development. So, um, I mean, there are ways to do migration scripts, but that's not something you would really want to version control in this instance. So uh, we still have to go through and, you know, activate these items on the final production site and set things up. So that has gotten us to publishing and triggering a, de a deployment with some live debugging in the remote path. And uh, so that's great and dandy. And so that gives us kind of a flow. And we can actually, uh, the one thing I forgot to create also is we should probably create a staging branch that we're going to call. We're going to create a new branch, call it stage. And this is being branched off of our main. So it has all the history that we had um, with our remote path. And we're going to publish up stage. 
and we can now verify that our staging site is getting the changes as well, which over here. That GitHub action should be running in the background and hopefully successfully deploy by the time I get uh, yep, there it is in our staging environment as well. So we can activate Frost and activate Yoast SEO. Um, so we have deployments successfully running. And the last kind of step in this overall workflow is so we deployed kind of a feature set, right? We deployed a theme and a plugin, um, you know. In a kind of a typical, I guess, common scenario, the client might go into the production site at this point and I don't know, say really basic, maybe they wrote a post, <laughs> they tried writing a post, and then they find that they don't like maybe a color or something, and they're like, hey, we want to make an update to the color for the theme. Can you do that? So this is kind of where the workflow gets finalized with, you can pull in the database into your local site and have the latest production. So we'll just show, let's see, we'll go back to our production and we'll add a new post. Interesting. I'm getting some funky connection issues on my, um, we'll just add some lorem ipsum here. and publish this. So I was pretending to be the client. Our new post is published. Um, so we wanna have the latest information on our local. So we're gonna use, I'll show you how to set up a local connect to WP Engine um, so that we can pull down this information. And let me just hop back over to my notes and make sure. So with local, um, the first step we have to do is something in WP Engine's uh, portal. And let me copy this link over here. We have to enable API access for local to connect to our account. Uh, so if you go into here, my engine, um, the, my WP engine.com API underscore uh, access, and then we would enable this for this user. And then we need to generate credentials uh, for uh, local connect. So just click that generate credentials and it'll give you a username and password, and then we'll switch over to local. And if you see down, you, there's down here in the bottom right, there's connect host, but there's also here on the left uh, connect. And it gives you connect to a, to a platform and we'll choose WP engine. And we can just add our API username and password. And now that's gonna connect and give us all our sites. And then, we come back here to our local site. <clears throat> then we want to go down to the bottom right here and choose now we've connected to WP, WP Engine. We can select that. And then these buttons over here allow us to pull and push uh, information to, the, to our WP Engine site, but you can also come over here to connect as well. And let's see, I call that WP. Actually, I'm going to stay over here because I think it's easier to find. And we're going to pull. So I'll click the pull. And this opens up kind of a sync screen in local. And then we're going to find our uh, environment and call it demo. And that was not a very good name, but found it. <laughs> and it gives us the environment. So you can choose production or staging you want to pull from, we're gonna choose production since we want the latest information. And the sync allows us to, you can pull, certainly pull down files. I typically only pull down the database. 
um, because again, we want to keep everything kind of pristine. So keep things in version control. And then if, I mean, if you need it's a file, I guess you could certainly pull it down here, but so I usually deselect everything over here because this is all the production files that are already up there and we just want the database. So pull that down and that'll actually also do a do domain replacement for you. So it'll replace the production sites uh, domain name with your local sites. Uh, and that should just take a second. Just wanna make sure we're still over here and that should be pulling down. And so we don't have that post yet, but it should be momentarily. See it changing site domain. And it actually logged us out uh, because that user is no longer um, there, which is actually uh, fine. We can actually add another. I'm just going to open up a site shell and add a user for basically our, our local site. We when we installed this on uh, created a user for us, but when we pulled down the production database, it overwrote that user with the production information. So we can say, create a new user. I'm just using WPCLI, which is built into local to create a new user. Uh, so then I can log in again on the local. Go over to posts and voila, there's our new post. So we have all the production, the latest production database information. And from here, we can start our new feature work or hot fix work, whatever we're working on. So maybe the client, like I said, maybe they requested a new color change in the theme of sorts. So typically I would go to the main branch, um, create a new branch. And then um, I like to adopt, and this will be in the final post as well, um, kind of it's a Git flow, GitHub flow hybrid uh, approach for um, branch naming. So I would call this feature, uh, you know, color theme change, uh, do my work in local and, and in VS code, you know, perhaps modify the frost theme or maybe spin up a child theme. Um, we'll just, for the sake of altering something, I'll <laughs> modify just a readme so we can see, you know, you would basically essentially make your code changes. I'm just going to add, I don't know, Damon here and save this. And commit this, say color theme changes. Uh, we'll commit that, publish our branch to GitHub. And I'm actually kind of new to GitHub desktop here, but I think, so I switched to staging branch now. And to merge in changes, let's see. I'm all, hmm. Update, compare, merge, in. now we don't want to merge in current branch. Although I guess you could, no. Yeah, we don't want to be on staging and then merge. Sorry, I'm new to this UI. Uh, it, yeah, compare, merge into current branch and then we can select so this will merge our feature color theme change change branch into staging and then we can push that up our state uh, staging branch up and that should trigger a deployment to the staging environment of course that wasn't a good uh, file to change because Unless I have SFTP, I can't really see that README was deployed, but uh, you'll have to take my word for it. <laughs> but we can at least verify that the GitHub action was triggered. 
if I can find my way back to my tab. And Damon, just a heads up, we are a little bit after time. Okay. Um, so yep. just, let you, just letting you know. Yeah, that's kind of a good wrap up spot. Um, again, a post and video to accompany this workshop will be published hopefully early next week and covers every step that we went through today. Um, and feel free to reach out to me, D Cook on Twitter for follow-up questions if we went too fast today and we covered a lot of terrain, really. Um, thanks for your patience on debugging some of these, these items. And thanks, Sam, for, for monitoring and, and helping out.